so many memes in this. I spent so long finding Pingu memes oh, that so fit, fun. and I'm very proud of a lot of them. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I need. How do you study? <laughs> Okay, guys, this is a bit of a meme slide. I just put it in because Peter was like, guys, can you please, like, help me make the slides? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll help you make the slides. I'll, I'll like, tell all the Jaffies the, the high knee addition to studying. Basically, like, I just didn't. <laughs> um, okay, this is, like, kind of true, though. Um, when I was studying for, like, studying for, like, semester one exams, I kind of just didn't. I just, like, did all of the revision quizzes and all of the, like... The, the like the, the you get like the past exams right and you also get quizzes from faculty and Denali also made like a bunch of really good like um content kind of quiz quiz like based things and that's like how I learnt content like I didn't learn content throughout the semester I just learnt it by doing questions which is very bad please don't do this because I literally died in the exam and I think it was just yeah it was not very like half very works. good but Heine passed, so like clearly... Yeah, I passed to... though. The thing is, the thing is, <laughs> it's very hard to fail med. Like I'm being genuinely serious here. It's actually like quite, like they make it impossible for you to actually fail. So with my limited knowledge, I managed to pass, even though I was like, didn't pass well, but like I passed <laughs> like semester one and semester two. And I ended up like, I looked at my wham the, like when the whams came out and I was like I don't want to look at it and I looked at it and I was like holy shit like I actually like did fine so guys it's okay but please like don't do it to my extent you can do it to some extent but maybe don't do it to the way I did it in semester one because I had a lot of regrets yeah, yeah. but we'll like we'll get started and then we'll, we'll get started on the actual session this yeah. is just a little don't worry if you don't actually study yeah so like um I think the start is like a bit more serious and then it gets a bit more lighter. It gets a bit lighter because I was like, whatever, I can't be bothered making these slides. Um, but like a lot of people I think have questions and like they change when they check, when they take notes. Um, like for me at the start of the year, I was taking notes before the lecture and then I found that lecturers don't upload their slides. Um, mm, so I was just like, Craig, whatever, I'll rock up. Craig some, Hassard. Literally Craig Hassard. Um, and then some people like sit in the lecture and they take really basic notes and then they do it afterwards. But like some people don't do it afterwards. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yep, hi Annie. Just um, dragging myself today, guys. I'm such a bad example. Please don't learn from me. <laughs> yeah, so like there are pros and cons for each before, during and after. Um, I personally like doing it during, um, especially now because you can watch it online. So you like... You just pause it, really. Um, but David, what do you do? Um, so I did before, during, and after. But it so essentially just spreads out your workload. So before, I just wrote out all my all the lecture notes that was uploaded into just like word for word. I, but I typed it. I didn't copy and paste it. So that primes your brain into knowing like what the content is, even if it's <clears throat> even if the content is unfamiliar. So you, at least you can see the buzzwords. And then during, you just focus on what they're saying and then you just write additional things within um, the already typed out notes that you've done. And then for after, so what I did last year was, um, so I made like one page summaries of, wait, can I share screens? Does this work? But, uh, yes. Yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of share screening today. Wait, yeah, like, let, me, let, me, let me just share screens quickly. Show us your Notion workspace. That's coming later. Okay. That's coming later. Yeah, yeah, we'll do Notion later. Um, wait, I'll just show you this quickly. Um, oh, there's two Davids. Cancel. Um, share screen. Share screen. Um, yeah. Also, try to make some year two notes for you guys once you do get into year two. So, oh, This is so weird seeing my iPad on my laptop. Um, okay, so year one. Was oh, that your acute kidney one? Huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was the acute kidney one, wasn't it? Very acute kidney. Um, <laughs> in year two, I essentially just made like one page summaries and you can see that, where is it? Is it here? Yeah, so I did like Cornell notes, like lecture reviews. They weren't the prettiest notes, kind of just color coded a little bit. 
Um, so essentially what I did was, that's find a good one, uh, NSAIDs, right? So essentially just like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So I just had like the notes of, and like the entire lecture just summarized into one page. Um, and then I would, and then I would get like, like the, I would have questions here. So I can use to like look back at later and then just like a summary, um, summary to quickly read and review like there. Yeah, so that's just like kind of how I went about year one. Um, this year has changed significantly. I think I still type out the notes, but it's, it's, it's like more so just like lecture. I'm just giving the outline of the content needed. So I just like get all the content, like what I need to be knowing. And then later just like using other resources like Amboss Osmosis or like anything on the internet just to fill out a very succinct kind of idea of such notes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we'll go through like those different resources David uses as well. Um, yeah, and then once again, like outside of your note taking, like when you take your notes, you can also take them on different things. Um, it's like some people say, like when you handwrite things, it goes into your brain better, right? Um, or time consuming. But it's really time consuming. Like, trust me, um, handwriting just takes longer, especially if you can type fast, right? Um, iPad's really good as well. Um, good diagrams, I think, like Jating and David and RJ use iPad, right? I used to use my iPad yeah. for notes. I do. I still do for anatomy because anatomy is like a nightmare. So I'm yeah. always like, especially for like imaging, I'm like with my iPad like everywhere. Yeah, um, it's just like. So I just annotate on my slides for mm, lectures. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people do use it for that. Yeah, no, I still don't. I only got the iPad recently, so I haven't really experimented with it in terms of actual studying. Um, I still prefer to type. Yes, yeah, um, and people say that um, you know you you know things things get into your brain easier if you handwrite them. Um, for me, um, I think it might be because I touch type, um, but I essentially recall information by kind of touch typing the information out mid-air. So that's how I can associate touch typing with knowledge. Um, yeah, so if you touch type, uh, you might like to try it that big, way. Big brain, <laughs> big brain energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I used to do that to memorize spelling. So yeah, I think I've carried it through from, you know, younger years up to now. So I still prefer to type. And since, you know, the iPad doesn't have the best I guess typing accessories. Um, still use my laptop. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm just like I just keep remembering David like on his iPad. He got the keyboard and like so loud. He would just like slam down on his keyboard like <laughs> like and everyone would look towards him because you could tell it was David. Um, yeah, and you look a bit dumb in lectures taking photos with the iPad as well. So don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like do whatever you like. Just keep in mind that iPads and pencils are fairly expensive. Um, but then oh, again, yeah. like so is a laptop. So um, yeah, it's like there's good things and bad things for both. Um, but it's not like necessary. Necessary. Um, like I don't have an iPad. I'm fine. Um, you just have to work around some things uh, a bit later. Um, yeah, once again, tons of applications to use, like OneNote, Word, Notion, things like that. Um, Notion's really good. Notion's become really popular Yay, lately. Um, tons of people have started using it. Um, and we'll go through like what Notion looks like a bit later and how to use it. Um, but really, as long as you get the information into your head, it doesn't really matter where the information goes before that. Um, <coughs> so yeah, but we'll go into more detail about Notion in particular. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So for studying, I think this is where the memes don't start. Okay, that's a bit sad. No, there's, uh, yeah, I'm there's a yeah. few, this is still there's like, a few. yeah, there's a few memes after um, this. <laughs> if you're getting a bit bored, you can do some shopping online. Um, so <laughs> textbooks, you can buy them. Um, this was me like two weeks ago. I bought textbooks. Um, I literally bought, I bought Talia Connor, which is your clean skills book. Um, it's the Bible, like, Genuinely, Tally yeah. is the Bible. Yeah, so um, tons of people have this, not just medical students, like people just keep this for life. Um, like it's the same, 
it's the same um, clean skills book you use for like specialist exams or like later down the track. Um, so like it's super, super useful. Like Heine's mum has. I, my mum has many copies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. So super useful. Um, and then a stethoscope, I think, I don't know if anyone's bought a stethoscope yet. Um, it's not necessary, um, especially during semester one, but a lot of people do purchase it eventually, um, especially towards the end of semester two. Um, there are like some fairly popular options. Um, there's like the Lippmann Classic 3, which is, um, which is what David has. He's wearing it now. Do you want to show us, David? So, yep. wait, unmute me. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not, you're no, you're, you're good. <laughs> yeah, so... Is that the classic? Yeah, this yeah. is just classic threes, and you can get, like, in black on the side. You can't really see it, but it's, like, here. You yeah. can get it engraved, guys. There's also rainbow ones. There's, That's like, true. there's a whole, whole thing out there. You I have like, the rainbow one. You can get, like, gold engraving. It's, it's like, a legit. Once yeah. you Should I try and find... Mum has a cardiology. Should I try and find the cardiology? Yeah, cardios are, like... Yeah. Very expensive. Mom though. has multiple. <laughs> they're like two hundred and sixty. Um, yeah. I don't think they're necessary though. Like. No. Yeah, they're they're necessary for like if you're like a, a like cardiologist. Nurse. Like when you're when you're actually like a doctor. Yeah. Don't get it like now because yeah. It's, it's, learning to yeah learning to like listen on like a shitty stethoscope is actually really useful because you actually your ears get like more sensitive to listening to like really like like different like specific sounds so it's actually like if you learn on like a shitty one and then you go to, to like a better one it's like you, can, you, know, like you, you know. always have a good one around like yeah exactly not, they only have like you can only use the, sometimes you can only use a step in the room so then that means that like it's not gonna be a good one it's just like a like a big farmer's funded yeah. one so like <laughs> and then once you get your step you can just post on Instagram, it's like, this is the heaviest piece of jewellery you can like, buy because it's like priceless or some other quote like that. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to do some online shopping, you can do that shopping. Um, like, you're going to buy a step eventually anyway. Um, so you can indulge yourself now if you really want to. Um, stethoscopes aren't going to change. So, like, buy it if you want to buy it. Um, but it's not necessary. Um, David was also sort saying about like a bunch of good resources. Um, I've put some free ones here uh, because like I don't like paying for things, but um, you can pay for things if you want to. Um, so up to date is like Wikipedia, but for doctors and medical students, um, it's like amazing. Uh, you can access it for free through your Monash account um, if you like look up Monash up to date. Use um, it for ICL. It's really yeah, use it for ICL. ICL. It's great. Um, Teach Me Anatomy, you'll use like semester two and all of year two. Bible. <laughs> it's like, literally Bible. Oh, there's, also teach so me, there's also Teach Me Surgery now. So they actually and Teach, teach Me clinical. Physiology. Mm, it's really good, guys. Yeah, it's really it's fantastic. Good. So like bookmark these pages, I would say. Um, like these are worth bookmarking. Um, YouTube, there's a bunch of good stuff. Uh, Osmosis is something David uses. Um, there's like free stuff and paid stuff. Free stuff is still pretty good. That's all on YouTube as well. Um, otherwise, you have like your individual YouTubers. Um, like Ninja Nerd Medicine does super, super in-depth videos about like fizz, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Sam Webster, he does really nice anatomy videos. Um, and then Crash Course is just like really fast paced, a bit brief, but it gives a really good outline on like your basic sciences. We love Sam Webster. He is the best. Like Sam Webster. Just wait for like GIT. Yeah. And uh, also, if you want to see more, just check out my Instagram. I have a post on there. <laughs> just plug Coffee Stat. Hey, but I pulled half of these from your Coffee Stat. I looked up what online resources you use. <laughs> um, and then BMJ best, best Practice is also really good. Get that for free through Monash. Um, and MSD Manual Professional. Uh, is like a less detailed up to date, um, a bit easier to digest. Um, Nadita recommended this uh, for our ICL as well. So that's BMJ, really it good. is really good. MSD is really good. BMJ is like really good on the like when you go on Clean Later because you can get a phone app. Whereas like the up to date and something you can't get the phone app for it like with the account link. 
Um, yeah. But BMJ, you can, so it's like not bad. Yeah, yeah. BMJ is really nice. Um, For clinical guidelines. Yes, uh -huh. clinical guidelines. Uh -huh. Clinical guidelines. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so that's like all your resources to use. Uh, in terms of like how to get the information into your head, though, um, there are tons of options. Um, I think last night you guys had like an Anki session, like a how to study through Anki. Um, so that's one option a lot of people use. use. Um, there's Active Recall, which is like Ali Abdal Central. Honestly, like this <laughs> half this PowerPoint is just Ali Abdal. Um, you should sponsor us for this. You should sponsor us. <laughs> um, otherwise, whiteboards. I think Jutin uses her whiteboard a lot. Yeah, Jutin, can you show us your whiteboard? I also use my it's whiteboard like the, a lot. Yep. In yeah. the background. It's like the huge ones that you would do for like, I don't know. Oh, like that was a free for the yeah. longest time. What? What? I thought that was your fridge for the longest time. Why would her fridge Why be would in I have a room? fridge in my room? Oh, is that your room? I thought you were like sitting in the kitchen or something. No. David. No. That's my whiteboard. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Markers are a bit expensive, but like they're worth it. Um. Get the pretty ones. Get the Daiso yeah. ones. No, get the Stedler ones. Stedler Ooh, ones are like very solid. Expensive. Very expensive though. Man, I'm lucky that you guys don't have active learning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, true. You can just borrow the whiteboard markers. <laughs> um, yeah. So David, like David, like does his one note, like one page summaries. Those are really, really nice. Um, forces you to con condense all your information down and get like the really important things. Um, otherwise, teaching others is really, really nice. Um, mm. Yeah, okay. like yeah, it's like drawing it out on a whiteboard, like you're trying to tutor someone. Um, that can really, really help as well as like discussing how to talk about it, how to explain it, because if you can explain it, then you can, then you know it inside your head. Um, otherwise, practice questions are really, really useful. Uh, like Heine passed her exams based off practice questions. So they work. Um, so like there are exams, there are PSP questions, there are Moodle quizzes, uh, your CIP things, um, like a huge range of questions you can use. Uh, so all really, really good. Mm. That reminds me, I need to look for my CRP soon. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, use those things. Those are really useful, um, especially the Moodle quizzes, because sometimes they'll take questions from the Moodle quiz and chuck it onto the exam. So super hard. It actually use. happened. It did happen. Mm. Yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah, great. yeah. A lot of the Moodle quizzes, and I'm like, ha! Ah. Um, CIP soon, any tips? Work it together in a group. Yeah, and like... Use Google, Google, use your notes. Right. Yeah, like CIP. Yeah, you can use Google, you can use... Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's conditions sometimes you haven't even looked at, I think. Yeah, and a lot of the CIP, like the info you're like, did we learn this in lecture? Did we learn this? It's like, when did we learn this? And it's just kind of like, a lot of it's... You'll oh. know, like, you'll know some questions, yeah. like, for sure. And then you'll know some based on the ones that are, like, leftover answers and you'll just, like, fit them in. So, um, essentially how the CIP works is just think of, like, matching the boxes. Like, you have a bunch of things to chuck into boxes and that's, like, basically it. Richard describes it as a crossword puzzle. That's not entirely correct because it's more so, like... It's like a backwards crossword yeah, it's puzzle. It's just like they give you the definition of something or give you a part of the this disease, for example, um, familial adenomatous polyps, like it's like 100% penetrance. And then it will say like, oh, which disease may have 100% pe penetrance? And then you just like chuck in. Um, and then, and then you, and then it's like matching the letter to the correct description of the condition yeah. kind of thing. So it's like they'll, they'll have the same, like, I think it's, it goes from like A to H or something, yep. or maybe to I. And so for like each, so you get the same, it's, you're answering questions about the same set of conditions, but they're just, every page is like a different part, like, in, like bit of the condition. So it might, you might do like pathogen, like not pathogen, it's pathophys for like one section. And then like the next page would be like, Oh, like the inherit, like the inheritance or something. Or yeah, it does it's like pathophys. Like, yeah, yeah, pathophys, treatment, um, risk factors, um, signs and symptoms, things like that. So, and a lot of it you can get through like, um, what's the thing where you like cut out options? Um, 
elimination yeah through elimination <laughs> so you do the ones you know first and then yeah. you can kind of guess what the remaining ones are otherwise yeah. just google it or just yeah we just did it together as like a group and we're like okay we're going to sit down to the cip together and we just did it together and yeah. then not officially unofficially yeah. about it like it'll be all right hmm? like one of my friends like um they forgot to do it and they still pass with good marks so like as in not the cip but like just a year with okay marks so yeah, yeah. um does that like make cip a bit more clear one sec so, i'm like doing like a quick it literally is like a puzzle. I think Jating will will try and show you what it looks yes, like without like actually showing you. Showing. Okay, um, I will share screen. Get given it to take home. It's on. Up. It's online. Hey, you know, can you teach me how to do the Med Med Twenty Four thing? I'll just make a Med Twenty Three thing once this. Once okay, so this is like me using Paint and like giving you an example. So what you'll get is you get like A B C D E F blah blah blah. So up here is like your key so a is leg b is arms d is eyes okay and on the right hand side you'll have a b c d e f but these are like draggable um letters so your question stem would look like something for example needs glasses so what need glasses maybe your eyes need glasses so you drag c and you put it next to that okay that's the answer you used to write things well which one of these do i use to write things i guess my arm or my okay my hand so i drag b over to use to write things stand on these what do i stand on i guess i use my legs to stand so maybe a is the answer so i drag a over and put it next to this and that's pretty much what cip is but <laughs> not with these questions yeah just saying i understand why you teach like lower year level like yeah i teach EAL lower year English. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's so funny but yeah, guys, CIP is like, it's literally like a puzzle, but like, it's like a backwards crossword puzzle. Backwards crossword. Yeah, I think. Yeah, like a backwards puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So they won't do like leg, arm and eyes, but they'll do like a condition. They'll do actual conditions that you guys have potentially gone through. Yeah, that was a good example. Bit of a weird example, but like, it's accurate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that's CIP. Um, yeah, so Anki, uh, back to Anki. Slides. Oh, right, no wonder. Um, so Anki, you guys would have had a session last night, I think, um, which I hope was pretty good. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, so yeah, Anki is really, really nice. Um, it's like electronic flashcards that uh, get reviewed at a predetermined um, interval, like. Um, so depending on how you did on the flashcard one time, it'll show it either like tomorrow or it might show it to you in three months time. Um, if you are really confident at it, uh, it's found on all platforms. It's really, really good. So it lets you do it like wherever you go. Uh, I would recommend getting it on your phone or something like that. Uh, once ISO ends, because then you can just do it on the bus, do it while you're waiting for a coffee, um, do it on the toilet, whatever, um, do it wherever. Um, because you can get like a ton of cards and if you do it slowly throughout the day, it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, there are also a bunch of add-ons. I think it was also gone through last night in the how to study sesh. Um, heat map is really, really nice. Um, like heat maps a bit addicting actually. Um, like I've texted David before, like on a morning and I've just been like, David, I lost my streak. I'm like so cut. Um, so it's actually really, really good to use a heat map. Um, so yeah, otherwise image occlusion enhanced um, is also really good. Uh, and we'll show you examples of this a bit later as well. I kind of just gave up sometimes. Like it's really like, it's hard though. Like just if you lose one day, don't give up, just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Anki is like high commitment, um, especially during like the first week or two. It can just make you sad. Um, it can make you sad, but, um, like after a while, it's really, really nice because then you get like a constant flow and you're feeling like you're learning things after a while. Okay. This is Ali Abdal. We're plugging Ali Abdal. Um, so this is active recall and it's basically, um, a concept where you, you remember information the best if you test yourself on it. 
um, it doesn't matter if you test yourself and you get it wrong. Um, the pure action of like testing yourself and getting it wrong and then retesting yourself and perhaps getting half of it right and then testing yourself again and perhaps getting it right, that whole process of getting it wrong and adjusting helps it get into your head. Um, I prefer this like active recall and I'll show you what I mean in a real example later. Um, I prefer it for like really large concepts um, because it brings together a large concept together, like a big picture view about lots of things. Um, yeah, it turns your notes into questions essentially. So you just test yourself on your notes uh, every couple days, every week or so. Um, but it's really, really easy to forget about. Um, and then in semester two, you'll come across anatomy. Um, I remember like the first time we had anatomy, uh, we stepped into the labs and like the tutors showed us like this x-ray, right? And then they were like, can you label this x-ray with like all these different anatomical landmarks? And literally no one knew anything um, because you're expected to learn anatomy before you go into the anatomy labs, um, which is a bit strange. Um, but pre-learning it is really, really nice. Makes you feel like super big brain um, when you go inside. Um, going through the workbook questions are also really good because a lot of them you can't solve by just looking at the specimen in front of you. Um, so use your resources, use your Teach Me Anatomy, use your YouTube videos, use all of those things to answer those questions. Um, but yeah, like pre-learning, really, really important for anatomy, excellent stuff. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you guys what Active Recall looks like. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Or does anyone have anything to add? David, I need your team, Archer. Um, ask dumb questions in the net, like just oh, yeah. trust me, like it's the fastest way you'll learn. Um, yeah. Because learning yourself takes ages in anatomy because everything uses Latin and like different terms. So if you just ask someone to explain it to you like on the spot, you'll get it straight away. Yeah, for sure. The, chick, the anatomy TAs are like so big brain though. Like it's, it's like scary sometimes. You'll, you'll meet some TAs and you'll just go, how does that knowledge just come from your this brain? So it's nice, just though. ridiculous. Like, the anatomy tutors are like the nicest people ever. Yeah. Mm. They sometimes do put you on the spot though. Like when you ask them a question, they're like, can you walk me through the previous steps first? And you're like, mm, can I not? Can you just tell me the answer? But like, it is all part of the learning process. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Subtle flex that I went to my anatomy TA's wedding, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a true fact. Okay, I'll show you guys. Um, okay, so this is Notion. Um, when you first see this, it's going to be a bit overwhelming. Yep. Yeah? Um, but basically what this here is, it's like a giant interactive table. Um, so like I have the date, I have the lecture topic or the class topic. Um, then I have the system, subject, teaching style. If I've done my questions or not, um, how important is it? And then like if there are lecture slides available and like any comments. Um, it's like date, topic, all these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you probably won't need the system right now just because you're not doing like system-based learning right now um, you might start doing it like semester two i reckon though um, but for now don't need to worry about it uh, subjects just like your anatomy hep psych things like that lecture tutorial as usual um, and yield i think everyone knows kind of what yield is um, so for example like if we find something um, for example, integrative medicine, applications in healthcare. This is a HEP subject and therefore it's low yield um, just because like the lecture is absolute garbage. Um, but sometimes you have really high yield stuff and you have really high yield stuff that's really, really confusing, which I just label here because it's confusing. Um, is that for God? Yeah. Yes, it is. That is <laughs> foregut and midgut and hindgut. Bro, I literally PTSD. I yeah. still haven't watched the integrative medicine ones yet. Yeah, don't. Straight up, don't. Um, okay, so I will show you guys. Would you guys like to see how to set one of these tables up? Do you think that's a good idea? Or would that take too long? Uh, it depends on what everyone 
I think for Notion, we will do another session just purely dedicated on Notion. And we can get like other people who use it on as well. Like, I'm sure, like Enoch's got some stuff that he can. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, but I'll show you guys what active recall looks like. Yeah. Um, Here's what I prepared earlier. This is actually what I prepared earlier. Um, so for example, um, so we had a lecture on diuretics. Um, nothing, nothing that you need to know for now. Like this is not stuff you need to know. So do not learn it. Um, but I'll show you like my process of how I kind of combined my notes and like put them together into questions. Uh, okay. So um, the first thing I wrote down in my notes uh, was something about hypokalemia or not enough, um, not enough potassium. Yeah. Um, and what I did this morning is I wrote a question. Um, it's too small. I'll try zoom in. Um, but I basically wrote a question. Um, and I wrote the question about like, what does, what, where'd the question go? Um, what might, what, yeah, hypo what yeah. might hypokalemia lead to? So like how it would go, it, is I would look at the question and I would get a notebook out and a pen out and I'd write down, oh, hypokalemia can lead to blah, 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 blah. And then like, I look at the answer. So I open the question and I say, okay, so it can lead to cardiac problems, uh, neuromuscular junction problems and neurological problems. And I compare the answer on my screen uh, with the answer I wrote in my book. And I say, um, how would I rate my answer? Was it like a fairly thorough answer? Was it a good answer? Um, did I not know any of it or did I get like half of it right? Or was I a bit uncomfortable with the answer? And from there I would select whether it was bad, medium or good. Um, and this allows me to like keep track of what content I'm learning and what content I'm getting right and what's, what I'm getting wrong essentially. Um, and after a while, um, after a while you start making your way through like all these questions and you start marking them off as good or medium and things like that. Um, the thing I would warn against though is I would simply copy and paste your notes into these questions. Otherwise oh, you can wait. waste a lot of time rewriting your notes, uh, yeah. which I'm not a big fan of. Even copy and pasting takes ages sometimes. Yeah, it can take ages. Um, yeah. Um, but like for a really in-depth look at it, like at all the evidence and stuff as well, um, check out Ali Abdal's video. Um, I think like we'll upload these slides later and there's in the, in the speaker notes, I've put in a link to the playlist about it. Um, so that's all really, really good. Um, yes, yeah, so that's like a vague concept on how I study and how I get information into my head. Um, but so yeah. In regards to the question, would you use this in addition to Anki or instead of it? Well, the thing with Anki is that you use Anki for road learning, right? Like you use Anki for like um, numbers, stats, small singular pieces of information that you kind of need to know just immediately. Like, and it's pure recall. Whereas when we're doing um, Notion and Active Recall, it's also trying to like um, put concepts and pieces of large information together. Or, like for example, biochem, like if this thing goes bad, like what could potentially happen? So it's not a singular piece of information, rather it's knowledge that is integrated with um, a lot of different facets. Um, wait, I'll show screens. Um, yep. My one is not like anywhere close to. Peter, yeah, yours is so organized. Like what the hell? All oh. right. I'm like, it's like, um, now nah, you're good. Okay, I'm gonna share. Um, yeah, it's not as legit, but like, I think my if it head works, head, then it's good. I think it looks quite nice. So, so yeah, this David is, looks nicer. Yeah. This is my headquarters, if you can call it that. And then notes, um, and then class notes. So then I, so the, in terms of notes, it's like, I have mine just kind of listed out. The notion just lags sometimes. And then so like, I've, I've got on most of it, but then in the recent few months, I started doing the one page again. And so I use Notion less, but um, in terms of the, like, this is going to show that I haven't been using this. 
as much as I should have. But um, in terms of like semester one active recall stuff, so I, I sort them into tables first, like whereas Peter does it in one table. So I do it like separately. So for example, in gastro, um, So then I have it, like I saw, it's like similar to Peter's one, like I have it all through. So you do it like as often as you can, and, and like that might not be every, um, like every day, but like hopefully like every week you might have some time to as just do as many as you can. Um, and you can just kind of go through and some like I haven't even done fully yet, which is bad on my part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can do it like however often you like. Um, there are periods of time where I can do it every like day or two. And then there are periods where I'll leave it for like a month. Um, like it'll look like a lot of questions at the start, but I tend to find that if you sit down and like put on a good playlist, that kind of thing, you can actually smash through quite a lot of the questions um, fairly quickly. Sorry, can we one second? Um, uh, let me just show you again quickly. The reason, oh my God, let me get out. Okay. The reason why like, I wanted to show actually was because Peter uses a notebook alongside, alongside his Notion thing. Um, I just found that like sometimes if you were on the go, like what you can, uh, on the go, um, is like you can have your answer here and then you can just write out whatever it is. So like today's date is the 30th of May. So you can write out like 30th of May and like what your answer will be there, so then you can, so then what you can say is like, and so you can write your answer. So what is the treatment for pancreatitis? Does anyone know? Buzz quiz. <laughs> no. Bro, I literally have no idea. Trypsin or something? Like, anti-inflammatories? I don't know, anyways. And then so you can, um, oh my God, we're all wrong. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> Did we land this? Oh my god. Um, so then, so then like, um, you would be like, bad, and then you can just like close it all, so that next time you can see how you've went as well, and kind of tracks like your progress on how much you know as well. Just like different ways of doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, the main concept though, the main concept you want to keep similar is just write a question, test yourself on the question, and keep doing that. Um, you can organize it in whatever way you want to do it and however frequently you want to do it. Um, it's really quite flexible. Um, yeah. Uh, does anyone have any questions about that stuff? Um, like if you, if you're having trouble setting it up, um, like feel free to men, uh, feel free to like message us and we can like go through it in more depth. The heck? David, is that your Japanese rock? <laughs> Wait, is she really playing sound though? Why, why did... <laughs> yeah, I can hear it. Um, anyway, okay. Back to the slides. Back to we're the back slides. On, we're back on track, guys. Back onto the slides. So, clean skills, um, believe it or not, clean skills is actually examinable uh, during semester two, um, like on your exam. It's um, so like, if you remember your workbooks, no, you won't remember in your workbooks because it's not there. Um, in the workbooks you get in semester two, uh, they'll show you like a certain sign or a certain symptom. Um, and it'll show and it'll tell you like what the cause of that symptom is. And those things are actually examinable in your exams. Um, yeah, and questions do come up. Like there's a whole section for clinical skills um, in the second semester exam. Um, otherwise, uh, in terms of your histories and your examinations, which you'll learn down down the track, um, I would recommend practicing these practicing these uh, pretty frequently, like um, not too last minute, uh, just because like you'll be doing this for the rest of your life, um, so you don't want to like neglect it because it's really the most important part uh, of like talking to your patient, trying to figure out what the problem is, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and you'll like slowly come to find that the current history that you're taking is like not, not actually really how we do like, it. Yeah. You don't um, really do it. But you'll see that next semester. So just keep doing the history you're doing. And yeah, that'll all be due. I think this is where the memes start, Hein. This is where they start. Okay. Oh boy. Um, okay. In terms of staying organized, 
Um, I like to use Google Calendar as well as like uh, Google Tasks or like Notion or anything like that. I'm um, just like keeping track of what pre-work, what, uh, what like group assignments you have due, things like that. Um, yeah, just stay organized. It'll make your life a lot easier. Um, and I think David's talked about this on Coffee Stat before. Um, but if it takes less than five minutes, uh, just do it now. Um, so for example, um, I don't know, uh, putting a pair of pants in the washing basket will take like 30 seconds. Um, so you might as well do it now instead of leaving it till later in the day. Um, that kind of thing. So the um, spoilers into our future copies that post are coming up. So the thing, there's this special law, it's called Parkinson's law, right? Like what is Parkinson's law? So I heard this on Ali Abdal's podcast, actually um, check it out if you have time. Um, so basically Parkinson's law is that work will fill the amount of time allocated for it. So what does that mean? So basically if you allocate today that I'm going to finish this lecture in this hour, then you will finish it in an hour. This is why like leading up to deadlines, you realize that the negative consequence is far more undesirable um, than just doing the assignment or like finishing the lecture or whatever, right? So yeah, honestly, yeah, straight up, I love the promotion, but like it is true, right? So whenever you have five minutes, just like get rid of those pesky little tasks or limit yourself into saying, I will finish this lecture in this hour and not instead drag it on for three hours because I can't really understand the content. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like just get it done. It'll make your life easier. It'll make your room neater. It's just like a real good time. Um, but yeah, like obviously there's a limit to that Parkinson's thing, but, um, don't be unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Don't be unrealistic with it. Um, yeah. Um, Anki, Anki, I think setting up's like not too bad. If you follow these steps, you'll be pretty all right. Um, I think the main important bit is to sign up for an Anki web account because that'll allow you to sync your decks like between your phone and your laptop and your iPad together. Um, so you can do it wherever you go. Um, I just use Anki for pharmacology as well as like, like tiny little bits of information that haven't worked through Active Recall. Um, but like some people use Anki for everything. Some people don't use Anki at all. Um, yeah and that's fine too yeah everything is fine but like legitimately everything is fine it's not like that dog burning in our in a house um yeah notion uh we've gone we've like showed you like what an example of how a notion account or like a notion database is set up um it's free for students which is really really nice um it's also free for personal account users i think if you don't want to use your edu account but your Monash email will get you like everything. Um, so just sign up with that. Um, add emojis and pictures. It'll make your life a lot better. Um, and it'll just like spice it up a little bit. And it's pretty. It's pretty. It's like so pretty. It's so aesthetic. Yeah. It also has dark mode if you're into that. Mm -hmm. um, like David has light mode, I think. I have dark mode. I have dark mode on, yeah. Yeah. It's like very beautiful. Notion's dark mode isn't fully dark. That just triggers me. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little bit like grey. So it's like yeah, but like yeah, whatever. I like the grey. <laughs> just do whatever you feel like. It doesn't matter. It's so um, pretty. Playlists. <laughs> playlists. If you're running out of playlists, there are a bunch of playlists to listen to. Um, yeah, figure it out yourself. Um, like some people like lyrics in the background. Um, I personally don't. Uh, just because like I can't pay attention to anything, I'll just start singing along. Um, so yeah, here are good playlists without any lyrics in them. Um, so you can suss those out. Okay, and then exams, this stuff, yeah, exams, like they it doesn't works. matter. Yeah, it works. Um, semester one exams don't exist, which is really good uh, for you guys. Um, but they're coming towards the end of the year. Um, so it doesn't mean that you don't have to learn the content. Uh, if you're super, super keen, uh, it's probably still a bit early to start practicing these questions, but you can get practice or past exams from aquella.monash.edu. Um, just be careful because the unit changed, like the unit changes every year or so in like what they teach. So some exams will have content that they haven't tested. Um, 
and the exam might not test all the content that you've learned. So just be careful with that. I'm pretty there sure is. there's only one semester wide exam. Like, there's only. The, wait, did I lag out? Hello? No, you're no, good. No, no, you're good. There's only one semester one exam like that you can use for um, that's kind of relevant. But there's a lot of PSP resources. So just oh, yeah, that. there are PSPs in the past who have like written exams and like, yeah. Um, and med faculty, you'll find um, they like to repeat their questions a lot. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that like 75% of the exam is going to be the same because that'd be ridiculous. But like, you'll see repeat questions and you'll be like, ha, ah, did that in a practice exam? Yay. Exactly. Yeah. Like they'll test the same concept just with like different numbers. Mm, um, yeah. Which is amazing. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Suss the PSPs. Um, and in addition to that, your preclin results do not matter. Um, like it's all pass fail, that kind of thing, which is really, really great. Um, it also applies in year two, which is also fantastic. Um, just keep in mind, like some of you might have scholarships. Just be careful with that. Like you might need a certain WAM to keep your scholarship, I think. 60, I wouldn't know. 60 but. WAM for like vice chancellors and then 70 WAM for all you actual chancellors out there. Bro, guys, okay. I managed to get, I managed to get above an 80 WAM with my ridiculous, barely <laughs> learning any content. And I like, guys, guys. You can do it, so don't worry. <laughs> like, it was ridiculous. I looked at my WAM and I was like, okay then. Guess, guys, we're, guess we're not getting kicked out of med. Did you guys see like the Monash love, love letters? Everyone's like stressed about HDs and then we're just like, can't relate. Yeah, we're just like, whatever. Well, don't really like, need them. Because like technically when we get an 80 WAM, like that's an HD, but like what does an HD mean to us? It doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah, yeah. literally does not mean anything. Like there's a Z score for your internships after fifth year, but... But like everyone gets an internship, so... Yeah, just everyone domestic, international students, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but like your preclin results don't count to your Z score as far as I'm aware. So that's still okay. You don't have to worry yet. Um, once you get your exams back, probably at the end of the year, honestly, um, you'll get like a score range. So you might be in the top 30%, middle 40% or the lower 40, lower 30%. Once again, none of these actually matter. They just help, I guess, some people, um, I don't know, deal with their results to like compare it to others. Um, but once again, like don't get caught up in these results. Um, like just use it as like an opportunity for self-reflection and see what works, see what didn't work. Um, yeah, things like that. Like if you get yeah. Guys, I was in the low 30% for every single one of my exams. And Heine's here. And I'm here. And I did fine. And I got above an 80 WAM. So we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we're all good. Like lower 30% doesn't mean that you failed. Um, it just means everyone else is really smart. Yeah. Like, 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 they are, you know, comparatively. Like, smart, so just relax. It's yeah, you got in you're obviously smart enough. Like everyone who got in is obviously smart enough to do the course. Even like people who don't get in are also smart enough to do the course. Um, yeah. Like all of you are here for a reason. So it really shouldn't matter. Like all of you have the capability to do well. Um, all of you probably will pass. Like it's super, super difficult to fail. Like you probably have to try to fail, I would say. Yeah, you um, do. You do have to try to people fail. People don't fail on academics. They fail on attendance. So just like make sure you go to the HKS tune that you have not been wanting to go to. So yeah, yeah. And all the hep shoots because oh, hep shoots is a hurdle. Yeah, and if you're going through like a rough time, faculty is super supportive. Like they're actually amazing. Um, like Richard, Jody, um, Michelle Leach, they're all fantastic. Um, like if you're having a rough time, like. It's amazing. Like people have had the assignment, like all their assignments postponed to like after exams um, when they've been having a rough time. Um, yeah. And like having a rough time doesn't make you any worse of a person. Um, so don't be afraid to like reach out um, because like faculty will help you through it. Um, so yeah, results don't matter. Just enjoy your life. Enjoy, enjoy being in uni. Just, you know. Yeah. Okay. So this is like good information here, I would say, in these two tables. 
um, because it showed it shows what uh, mark breakdowns we had um, last year in our semester one exam. Um, and this will be released, like they'll release like a pie chart to show how many marks go to what subject, um, like before your exams. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Um, it probably won't come out before, like it probably won't come out for semester one, but it'll come out like semester two. Um, so yeah, you can see that like, your HKS, super, super high yield. So is HEP, so is microbiology, so is anatomy, so is biochemistry. Um, Looks like this. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Let me, let me share Do you want me to share? Yeah, sure. yeah, you might just want to share the actual thing. Got a nice hand, David. <laughs> It's like this. Yeah. So they'll like give you it's a list like of topics. Everything that you need to know. It's essentially just your lectures that they just wrote it out for you in a in a table form. Yeah. Can you zoom in on one of the pie charts, David? Uh, here. Yeah. So that was our paper one. So you can see it was Look mostly at that HKS. Look at that biochem. HKS man. anatomy and biochemistry. <sighs> so I remember it. that semester one exam and just oh. I was stressed. I just looked at the amount of biochem and I was like, that's it. Like, I'm done for. But to be honest, okay, so I think this is something that Ned does. It's called, have you guys heard of the Pareto, uh, Pareto principle? So it's like the 80-20 rule, right? So it just says like, um, for example, one is like 20% of the world owns 80% of the wealth. In this case, Med tests 20% of the content actually takes up 80% of the marks. So just go for the, that's why we always say like high yield content, right? Like that's why we always have to be looking at things that um, kind of help you get through the exam. But of course, like, you know, when we're looking at exams and stuff, it's not just for exams, it's for actual patients in the future. So don't just like look for high yield only without caring for any of the details either. But it, it is just like a trend that tends to happen. Yeah. Um, so I'll reshare. Um, like there's no guarantee that these mark breakdowns will be the same for you guys. Um, especially this year. Yeah, especially yeah, this, this year. year. a little bit crazy. I honestly have no idea how it'll work this year because you'll only have one exam for semester one and one exam for semester two. Whereas we had two exams for semester one, two exams for semester two. So they'll probably like squish all of it together and just take the 20% as David was saying. Um, but yeah. Um, in terms of like how long it takes to study, uh, like a couple of weeks is probably okay. Depends how many lectures Graham? you have. Depends how many Graham? lectures you have yeah. really. How much coffee and Red Bull you want to drink. Yeah. How much sleep you want. Yeah. And like how well you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Like if you just don't care, like you can have a great time and swap back. Like Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like these mark breakdowns are really, really useful for studying. Um, and when you get your results, you will get like, you got, I don't know, 16 marks for HKS and the cohort median was, I don't know, 15. These are false numbers. Um, so it can like help you see yeah. what subjects you're pretty good at, what subjects might need a bit more work, that kind of thing. And the cohort median is always ridiculously high. Like yeah. I remember for psychiatry and for pharmacology, it, the cohort median was nine out of 10. Like. <laughs> But you'll start and to see And then I saw why. my mark and I was like, mm, okay. You'll start to see why once you do the practice questions, because they repeat the questions. That is very buzzwordy, even like now, so. Yeah. Especially for farm. And like anything that's report heavy, everyone does well because they just memorize facts. Exactly. Um, yeah, so you have different question styles on the exams. Um, MCQs, everyone knows what an MCQ is. Uh, EMQs are a bit new like these are the first time I've come across an EMQ mm. um, and it's like a list of options it's like A to H or whatever and they might give you like a bunch of drug names A to H and they'll give you like question one then it might ask like um, this patient comes in and they have uh, this infection um, what medication might you give for this I don't know garbage question and then you would circle like you would pick like either A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H um, for that question. 
Um, so it's like a bit more of a difficult multiple choice question, if that makes sense. Um, and then extended response, uh, HKS and Medlaw was for semester one for us. Um, and then there was no extended response or no writing for semester two, which is really so great. surprising. Oh, I was really surprised. Surprised. They didn't tell us that. Like we, we asked and then they were like, oh, we shouldn't be asking things like that. And everyone got yeah. really- they're really like, you have to prepare for anything. And we were like, mm. Yeah. And then like, we were talking to like people in the year above and they were like, no, nah, they didn't give us any like extended response last year. So yeah. So this is for the record. Like we did not have any extended response last year um, for semester two, but semester one, there definitely is. And that's for HKS and for med law. Um, um, yes. Psychiatry yeah. is semester one. Um, I think they call it medicine, both. medicine of the mind. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. But like you, you learn it in both if that's what you were asking. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite subject. We love psychiatry. We yeah. also love the lecturer. Like, yeah. Love we him. love it when his phone goes off in the lecture and he takes a clinical call, like an actual, actual call with a patient, like in the lecture. We love that. Yeah. Um, otherwise that's the end of my slides. Um, does anyone have any questions about like exams or like life? Stuff? How to stay on top of stuff or how to catch up on stuff? I'll take it as a no, maybe. And like, if it was really intense, then someone's like, oh my god, like, it seems like uh, they have such good study habits, you know, they're so on top of their. Uh, their work but like in reality like yeah not, not really. okay so the hep questions are very much they're kind of like our kahoot questions i would say like yep. would you say that yeah they're, they're basically very much memorization based like they'll say what is the most like uh what is like the best diet and they will give you like four five options and it'll be like mediterranean ornish the like the western yeah. diet or something like what even whatever that is and then they and like you just choose the option um they i don't think they actually have really focused on testing statistics it's just it's more like you need to know like the concepts of like, yeah. of hep and being mindful and like you know like stress will cause what and then like they'll give you like the options and it's like it's pretty obvious most of the time what the answer what is, is the symptom of burnout yeah. Burnout is a symptom of burnout. Question right there. I yield for. So okay, so for hep stuff like like that, like have a like a framework of thinking of how you want to actually answer these questions. Like psych, all right, mental health is really important, so therefore we should think about it through the biopsychosocial model. And then like Loki for a bunch of the questions, just use that same model to answer questions, and you'll probably get it right like one in one in two yeah. chance kind of. Hep, I don't think I actually studied for him yeah, cool. yep, I just I guessed don't think this. I did I like I just, briefly like, I like briefly just, looked over my just, notes just. and like guessed in the exam and it was fine yeah, for sem one best I think like for sem one I think for HEP honestly like the most helpful thing was just doing past exam papers because um cough, cough, HEP likes to recycle questions the most Craig Hassard doesn't like rewriting his questions yeah so um, difference between <laughs> The difference between paper one and two is just the kind of, they just split, they, they'll just split it for you. Like faculty will split it and the mark breakdown will be slightly different. I think people generally find paper two to be harder. If that's the general feel, yep. um, unless you're David in semester, semester two, who found Ridiculous. paper two easier. Did you Ridiculous. find paper two easier? Um, so it's difficult. Um, but yeah. It, it just depends on how faculty decides to break down the content that you guys learn. And you'll always get told ahead of time what's going to be on each paper. Um, I'm like very bad at memorizing. So like, I don't, I'm not actually very good at memorizing, but most people in med are like legends. They look at one thing and then they remember it for the rest of their life. Photographic memory, yeah. I don't understand. I'm really bad at that. But then like for Sen2, why I said paper two was easier was because paper two was like cardiophysiology. Like it was really heavy on concepts and like, how to utilize ideas you already know. So then once I've learned something, I feel like it's easier for me to like utilize it. So that was okay. 
But then paper one, that was like musculoskeletal system. I was just memorizing every single bone, artery, nerve, innovation for, to the body. That's true. Paper one was just like, I was just sitting there like... I can't memorize all these pathways that, as, that well. But when it came to application, I was a little bit better. So just like, you, you will find your strengths and weaknesses. Um, extended responses are, I remember for HKS, page. it was a page yeah. for like each kind of... They, they gave you a page to answer each. It's up to you how much you want to write. Right. Yeah, but it's really. up to you. Um, I think my three actually marks it. Mm. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Which he does. My three marks every single one. Yeah. Which, um, and he's always like, guys, I'm so excited to read like what you guys write on the exam. And we're like, are oh, you though? Like, do you really want to read what we, what we wrote? But yeah, they give you a lot of space to write as much as you want um yeah but there's no expectation of like how much you need how long do you guys study each day i don't i still don't what day is today saturday i haven't studied me neither today yeah i haven't studied today either. i studied i studied on wednesday and i studied on friday no, I did Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, guys, I had a streak. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's the longest I've like. The oh, guys, okay. I think this semester, the only time I've actually properly studied is when David forced me to wake up at eight a.m. and study with him. <laughs> like that's genuinely the only time I've properly studied, and that was like five weeks ago, and that was the only time I actually learned anatomy. So, yeah, guys, I'm I'm doing really good in isolation. It's it's really. Like some days just like take off. Like some days I'll just do nothing. Like I'll just watch Netflix, honestly. Mm. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay to have a day where you're just like, you know so what? Good. I don't care. Like I'm just going to do whatever I want today. And it's yeah. okay to have that. It's so good. I just went on a trip with my dad. Like we just drove out and it was like totally chill and weather was nice, you know. Yeah. Um, so in terms of first year though, like, I don't really want to quantify hours just because it's kind of unpredictable day to day. And also hours is a very good indication of how much you actually like retain and know. But if you really do want a number, so I'm just going to take uh, Tuesday. So that's our longest day. Um, and your long, so your longest day. So we start in the morning and then we finish and then you're like so exhausted at night, right? But then when you get home, like what I might do is that, so I'll do the one page summaries for the lectures on that Tuesday. Wait, did we have lectures on Tuesday? Yeah, we did, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Tuesday was our longest day. Yeah, so I did the uh, lecture one page summary. So they, those might take like half an hour each. So it would be an hour in total. Uh, maybe a little bit more, to be honest. And then I'll spend like a brainless, like another hour or so just typing up notes uh, um, for the next day. So if Wednesday, which I know you guys have a day off, but like, let's say you just, you did have class, then I would spend like another hour just typing up notes and then um, maybe do a little bit of anki. So like, if you think about it, it's really not that much, like two and a half hours. That's why I'm saying like, you need to be constantly learning in your classes. Don't let your classes go to waste. They're not, it's not high school anymore. When classes doesn't matter, you can just do practice exams outside of class. Make sure you use your classes. Like there is not many like, wait, what was that thing we used in high school? That book? Checkpoints. Checkpoints. checkpoints yeah like like there's no check, check checkpoints anymore so you can't just grind those ones in your own time. legit like listen in class ask dumb questions clarify everything um and then that will really help your productivity rather than spending like an hour trying to figure something out yourself so use the resources that are provided to you uh, efficiently so it will save your outside of med life and that's really important and like email your lecturers like if you, you don't understand something that was covered in the lecture just like email your lecturers. It's not like, I feel like people kind of have this thing where like, oh, we can't like email the lecturers because they're all like busy professors and they're all like, they have like a life. Like they don't. Like Lecturers they, love to answer questions. Yeah. And like, they love giving you like, it's yeah, because they like, love interacting with us. Yeah. Like all of them are experts in their field and they've dedicated so much research time into it. Like, and they want to share that knowledge. Like it, I feel like it gives them a little bit of an ego boost as well when you ask them a question. So yeah, like, you know, it's like their job is to explain the thing to you. Um, because right? if you don't like, understand whoa. it, if you don't understand it, it's not your fault. It's going to be the lecturer's fault. Um, someone says that. Michelle someone says that. Yeah. Oh, we love Michelle. Yeah, guys, Michelle is like, 
oh, their yeah. cons- and consolidation sessions are like gold out of this world. Like they're like the yeah, highest yield leaked. content ever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like if you don't understand. It's always it, the like, uh, yeah. No, it was Chris Wright. It was Chris Wright who said it. Uh, yeah. Like uh, Chris Wright. Guys, we love Chris Wright. Oh, he's so good. I emailed him the other week. He like, I think he asked me if I understood the concept like at least three or four times. Like, and then I didn't reply to his email because I think he would have just kept asking. <laughs> both. Michelle Leach. Michelle Leach is on another level. But both. Both. Yeah. Are but yeah. Michelle queen. Lazarus as well. Michelle Lazarus will change the way you pronounce anatomical Duart- body, mm-hmm. like. Duodenum, like that's how I, I just say oh, duodenum, I say duodenum now. now too. I, don't, I don't say duodenum, I say duodenum. But like cervical becomes cervical. But, it's both. but the thing is, it's like, it's, you pronounce like cervical for like other, like other things, right? But like cervical is when it's like related to like the cervix, but like cervical is like for like other. Why don't they? Like, 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 yeah, like cervical, like lymph nodes or like whatever. Yeah. Um, how long do you guys study um, Yes, like how study each day your, changes. Like, how has your study routine yeah. in COVID been different to during? I don't study in. Yeah, there's no more routine. ISO. Yeah. There's no. I don't have a routine. Some yeah. people have like, like really like like maxed out on productivity. Like David, like has actually like got it figured out. I am the exact opposite. <laughs> like at least when I went to physical classes, like people around me were studying, so I would be forced to like join in on like study sessions. Now I'm just like, it's okay. Semester one doesn't have exams. I'll be okay. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah there, there is no routine. Yeah, there, yeah. yeah, for me, there's no routine. I always counted on the physical lectures to keep me up to date. Now they don't exist anymore. I don't even know what day of the week it is. 